Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the Gospel of Luke chapter 9. I'll be reading verses 1 and 2 and then I'll jump over to verse 37. And this is what it says. Jesus called the twelve apostles together and gave them power and authority over all demons and the ability to heal sicknesses. He sent the apostles out to tell about God's kingdom and to heal the sick. And then starting at verse 37. The next day when they came down from the mountain, a large crowd met Jesus a man in the crowd shouted to him, Teacher, please come and look at my son because he is my only child. An evil spirit seizes my son and suddenly he screams. It causes him to lose control of himself and foam at the mouth. The evil spirit keeps on hurting him and almost never leaves him. I begged your followers to force the evil spirit out, but they could not do it. Jesus answered, you people have no faith and your lives are all wrong. How long must I stay with you and put up with you? Bring your son here. While the boy was coming, the demon threw him on the ground and made him lose control of himself. But Jesus gave a strong command to this evil spirit and healed the boy and gave him back to his father. All the people were amazed at the great power of God. Pray with me. Lord, we want to be amazed at your great power, not just reading about it a long time ago, but your power in our lives this day. Thank you for your great power. We need it to transform us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Read a story about a cab driver from Los Angeles. He was going on vacation to New York. He flew into New York and he saw the sights. He saw the shows. But what he enjoyed most while he was in New York is conversation that he had with New York cab drivers. They were sharing stories and swapping incidents, talking about the similarities and differences of being a cab driver in L.A. and a cab driver in New York. And when his vacation was over, he was headed back to the airport, and the New York cab driver said, I've got a riddle for you. He said, but you have to listen real closely because it's a tough one. The L.A. cab driver said, okay, well, tell me. He said, my mother and my father had a child. It's not my brother. It's not my sister. Who is it? And the L.A. cabbie said, well, I don't know. He, New York cab driver said, it's me. Get it? It's me. My mother and my father had a child. It's not my brother. It's not my sister. It's me. Get it? He goes, oh, yeah, I get it. Well, so when he went back to, to L.A., his friends were saying, well, how was your vacation in New York? He said, well, I saw the shows, I saw the sights, I, you know, went, but what I enjoyed the most was the New York cabbies. And we shared a lot about how things are similar and different in New York, he said, but there was a cab driver who gave me a riddle, and I'll, I'll give it to you, but you've got to listen care carefully. And they said, okay, well, well, shoot. He said, all right. He said, my mother, my father, they had a child. It's not my brother, it's not my sister. Who is it? They thought for a minute and said, well, we don't know. He said, it's the New York cab driver. Get it? <laughs> Do you get it? Well, you know, some people say they get it when they really don't get it at all. Luke is wanting to make sure that you and I, that we get it. 
So he, he tells the story about the kingdom of God because it was a, a story of power. And he wants to make sure that, that you and I get it. So he uses a literary device. And he uses a literary device that's called bracketing or, or clausio, where he, he uses that word power on, on either side. That's why I started at verses 1 and 2 and then jumped over to, to, to verse 37 because those are the two ends of the bracket, the two ends of the, the clausio. And it says that Jesus called his apostles together and gave them power and authority. But the very last words that I read were that they weren't able to cast out the demon. They had the power and authority, but they weren't able to use it. And then it ended up talking about the power of God. They were amazed at the power of God. Well, whatever is in between those two brackets, they all have to do with the same theme. This theme of power. That Jesus came to, to usher in the kingdom of God. It, that was his number one favorite sermon topic. And, and it was a kingdom of power. And from the beginning to the end of the gospel of Luke, Luke talks about this power. In chapter 1, Mary is told from the angel that the Holy Spirit will come upon you in the power of the Most High. Will overshadow you. That it's the power of God that, that was evident to Mary. Not only that, in chapter 4, it says Jesus returned to Galilee in power. Again, chapter 4, they were asking, what is this message? For with power and authority, he commands demons and they come out. Chapter 5, the power of the Lord was present for him to perform healing. And then we read here in chapter 9, and he called the 12 and gave them power and authority. Jesus' very last words in the Gospel of Luke were, you must stay in Jerusalem until you are clothed with power from on high. It's this power, dunamis in Greek. It's the same word we get dynamite from. It's the word we get dynamic from. It's not a smidgen of power or just a touch of power. It's explosive power, life-changing power. And this is the power that's available in the kingdom of God that Jesus ushers in. And the first story here in chapter 9 that, that Luke shares with, with the reader is a story where Jesus and his disciples are, are coming together. They want to take a retreat because they've been out in the villages preaching the kingdom of God. They've been out healing diseases in power of God. So now in retreat, they're to come together. They're going out into the country. They look back and 5,000 people have followed them. Well, they have power. So Jesus calls on them to use that power. He says, you give them something to eat is what Jesus says to his disciples. But even though they have power, they, they, they don't get it. They don't get it at all. And they said, well, all we have here is five loaves and two fish. Jesus takes the five loaves. He takes the two fish. He turns toward heaven and he blesses them. And there's enough there to feed 5,000 with 12 baskets left over. And that's the first thing that I want to talk about, that Jesus has the power to redeem things. That's the first thing that I want to talk about. His power is the power to redeem things. Yes, common, every day, ordinary things like bread and like fish. Do you remember when Moses... God spoke to him from the burning bush and said, go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And Moses tried to, to back off from it. He said, well, I, I don't speak so well. The question that God asked Moses, what is that in your hand? Well, Moses had a staff in his hand. And we know from the story, from that point on, the staff was an integral character, a, 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 a significant part in convincing Pharaoh to let his people go. That it was with his staff that, that Moses parted the Red Sea. It was with his staff that he struck the, the rock and water came from it. That God has the power to redeem things. Everyday, ordinary, common things. Like 
bread, like fish, like a staff, whatever it is that, that's in our hands. A few years ago, I got to know a young man in my congregation well. He, um, he wasn't just a good golfer. He was a great golfer. At that time, he was in the top 28 amateurs in the world. He went to Georgia Tech, and he got a golf scholarship there. He wasn't just one of the, the great golfers at Georgia Tech. He was the number one golfer. Not only that, he got the Bobby Dodd Award as the best athlete on, on campus there at Georgia Tech. When he was in his senior year in the ACC tournament, he was asked to give the devotion to the players, coaches, and, and, and caddies there at the breakfast that morning. He sent me a text, and in that text he said, Pastor Tom, pray for me this morning. I have an opportunity to reach some goals and to give glory to God. James White knew that the most important thing in the world is not golf. The giving glory to God, and he was is the most important thing. And, and, and he was able to use a, a golf ball to do it. That <laughs> Jesus Christ redeems things, common things like a golf ball used to give glory to God. What is that in your hand? Is it an iPad? It can be redeemed to give glory to God. It might be just sucking away great big huge chunks of time from your day now, but it can be redeemed to reach out, let folks know that they matter to God and that they matter to you as well. Maybe with an email, maybe, maybe with a, a text, you can use your phone. What is it in your hand? Is it an iPad? Is it a phone? What is it in your hand? Is it a wallet? Is it a purse? God can use your money. That, that maybe you've been spending great sums of it on yourself, but, but now He can redeem it to be used to give glory to Him and what He's doing in the world. That Jesus has the power to redeem things. And my hope this morning is that you get it. That you get it. Second thing that I want to talk about this morning is that Jesus has power to redeem the past. The second story that's, that's told right here in Luke chapter 9 is a story about Peter, James, and John going up on the mountain to pray with Jesus. And while they're praying, Peter, James, and John fall asleep. Well, they wake up when Jesus is, is talking to two men. It's Moses and Elijah. They're sitting there, Jesus, Moses, and Elijah, talking, talking about Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection. Well, that might not seem like such a really big deal, except that Moses has been dead for 1,200 years, and Elijah has been dead for 850 years. Moses represents the, 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 the first five books of the Bible. Tradition says that Moses wrote them from Genesis and the creation story all the way to the promised land. And Elijah, the four major 12 minor prophets, he was the quintessential prophet. That They represent all that has passed. And Jesus Christ, through ushering in this kingdom, through his, his crucifixion and resurrection, has power to redeem the past. And that's what I, the second thing that I want to talk about this morning. Jesus Christ has power to redeem the past. Dr. Philip Zimbardo, in his book, The Time Paradox, talks about research that he's done. And in The Time Paradox, he talks about how people's attitude toward the past, that it affects their present and their future. And that's one of the paradoxes, that the, the, the attitude toward the past affects the present and the future. And those with a, a negative attitude toward the past tend to be more aggressive, more anxious, less conscientious, less considerate, more depressed, less energetic, less friendly, less happy. They lie more often. They steal more often. They lose their temper more often than people with a highly positive attitude toward the past. And that it wasn't what had happened to them in the past. It was their attitude toward it. 
that even those who had been through the, the Holocaust, that if they were able to look at their past and see it in a, in a positive aspect as being a major element that had given them hope toward the future, that their, their lives were changed in a significant way. You and I are in a, a very difficult, hard time right now. But in this difficult, in this hard time, we have an opportunity either to, to, to look at this as, as, as a practice, to practice hope, to practice trust leaning on God, to practice reaching out to neighbor, to stranger. Or we have another opportunity to practice defeat, to practice self-loathing, to practice regret. Jesus Christ redeems the past. 2 Corinthians 5.21 said, He who knew no sin became sin on our behalf in order that we might be made right with God. Well, what does it mean to, to, to become sin on, on our behalf? It means he took all those things in the past. He took the, the shame, that he took the guilt, he took the regret, he took all those horrible things in, in your past and mine, and he nailed it to the cross to kill it once and for all. All those things that would conquer us, the sin that would destroy us, all those things that would, would grind us, that he took all of those things and he nailed it to the cross to take away its power. And when he rose from the grave on the third day, he gave that power, that power, the power to overcome, the, the power of victory to you and to me. And my hope is that you receive that power, the power that Jesus gives to redeem the past and that you get it, and that you get it. This morning, I not only wanted to talk about Jesus has power to redeem things, He has power to redeem the past, but He also, of course, has power to redeem people. The third story here in chapter 9 is the story that we read this morning. It was a story of a, a little boy that was so sick that it seemed like he, his life was behind the but, but this, this, his life was beyond the, the hope, the hope that, that anybody could give him. Well, that's the point of the story, that no life is beyond the power of hope in Jesus Christ. That no matter what you've done, no matter where you've been, no matter where you are right now, that there's no life, no life that's too far gone. No life that's forever ruined. First Peter 3.18 says that Christ died for sins once for all. Not for some, or not some who are good enough, but Christ died for sin once for all. The just for the unjust, in order that He might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh and made alive in the Spirit. You and I don't have power enough to get to God. No matter how good we are, no matter what we do, we don't have power. That it's Jesus who has the power to, to bring us to God. Let Him love you. You're not beyond that love. You're not too far gone. There's no such thing as being forever ruined. Let Him love you. Let Him forgive you and cleanse you and make His home in your heart. This morning, I want to pray that you get it. There's no magical words, but there is prayer. Prayer that has power where we lean on Him, where we rely on Him, we trust Him. And I want to pray that prayer with you this morning. Pray with me. Jesus, you have the power that we need. I know that there are folks this morning that believe they're beyond that power. They're too far gone and forever ruined. 
But I also know that you have a a voice, a spirit that penetrates those hard, hard places. And I ask that that these folks receive your love, come to know your forgiveness this day, and begin to feel the, the healing warmth that you give not one day, but this day, and their lives be forever changed. Lord, grant strength enough to receive the power of Your Spirit that we might trust You, that we might lean on You, and that this day we might be amazed at the great power of God available to us. I know that there are folks here this day that have had a tendency to to look on what's going on these days and in the past and see nothing but but negative, defeat, self-loathing. You have the power for hope. Grant that this morning we might get it. Get the power of your Holy Spirit and, and know that you do have power to redeem the past. Lord, grant to us this morning the power also to redeem things. Sometimes we look at things just as as things. And other times we give them the power of life and death over us. Lord, you have power to redeem things. Use each object, what it is that's in our hand to to be used to your glory. That's the strength we need. This morning I ask that you grant us power enough, power enough to, to get it and receive your spirit. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, Just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, Thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're a church that's a place of community and faith, and we're a welcoming church. I hope that you experience that online, but not only online. My hope is that you experience it through our Facebook page. But not only that, once we meet together in person, we're at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, and I hope you'll come and experience it in person. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church and we're a compassionate church. It's a place of community and faith where we help people live a Christ-centered life. And my hope is that you'll come and be a part of it. Thank you for joining us.